Hello there, kids. It is I, Stray Cat, the one and only, coming to you with another episode of Stellaris Console Edition, the redo. Alrighty, when we left off, we were trying to get the galaxy in a proper state now that we're part of the galactic community and dealing with all of the new added features with the DLC. Uh, currently, we... Oh, we have a couple new uh, resolutions that have popped up since uh, I was last looking at the proposals floor. Guardian Angels Act. I'm still abstaining from that. Regulatory facilitation. We should leave regulatory decisions to the experts. Industry leaders are the best qualified to identify wasteful regulations that impede productivity. Right. About that. I, uh... I don't believe you. <laughs> At all. Ugh. I would rather oppose this, to be honest. Uh, whoops. Did not mean to do that. Meant to do this. Technically, I would rather oppose that. For the time being. Okay, other than that, um, I got my, well, I got my construction ships working on a couple things. I got Saya working on creating an outpost here in Trab, <laughs> and I got this one working on a outpost in Biham, so uh, we can get all of that taken care of and start branching out in those directions, which is the main reason I did that. I also did another thing. Uh, had the market, why is that even an option that I have? I shouldn't be able to even do this option. I'm pretty sure I had turned off that option. So that shouldn't even be something I can jump into. Yeah, it's prohibited. Yeah, so I don't know why I'm able to go into the market for it. That's really weird. Um, I don't... I... No. <laughs> Just no. Um, anyway, the thing I was going to show was I have a monthly trade for uh, some of our exotic gases that we're bringing in. Uh, we have one on the market per month that we sell for about seven. That should offset some of our uh, mild credit bleed that we've been dealing with thus far. Hopefully that's what it does. Um, also got a lot of these, but unfortunately they don't sell for all that well. So I can't really put them on the market for automatic trades like that. So... I kind of just have to deal with that. Anyway, had to take a drink of my drink. Um, let's sell half of what we have in our stockpile and uh, go with that. And now we continue on with the game. Oh, what is this about? The Eon Alliance entered a commercial pact with the United Nations of Earth. Okay. Good. Good to know. Good to know. And... Living Metal Lakes. Wow, sirs. Investigation of the caverns below the surface of Uzmzara. Uz Uzmzara. That's a hell of a fucking word. I shouldn't be swearing this early in the episode, but screw it. Uh... Reveal them to be filled with a silvery liquid metal that flows from cavern to cavern in gleaming rivers pooling into underground lakes. More surprising still is the discovery that this metal substance shares many key properties with organic life forms, including responding to environmental stimulus and exhibiting self-sustaining processes. It remains to be seen whether this exceptional metal should be classified as truly alive but it may have several practical applications for our engineering technology. Yep. 
Good stuff right there. Science division reports a new breakthrough. Okay. Ooh. Unexpected arrivals. Intelligence reports are coming in to Felon Day regarding the hitherto lifeless surface of ruinous core in the Paragir system. What our surveyors initially considered an uninhabited junk pile of a planet is in fact home to a species of rat-like sapiens. Dubbed Ketlings, these creatures have been living hidden from our view in tunnels in the planet's enormous scrap piles. The complex composition and incredible density of these massive junk heaps must have hindered earlier penetration by our scanners. Interesting. Whatever may have brought the Ketlings to the surface is thus far unknown. Though now that we can observe them, we have noted their technology is almost entirely based on repurposed junk from the planetary ruins they inhabit. Could the Ketlings be the last survivors of the lost interstellar civilization who made these ruins? Closer study may yield more information. Absolutely, I want to know their origins. New sitrep. Absol- Friggin' lootly! It's still too early to swear, but still. <laughs> I absolutely want to know. Absolutely. Okay, I still have Cassus Belli. Uh, Act of War on... Uh, Polysimus Syndicate, and I don't know why. I'm. Oh. My ideology is apparently an act of war against them. Okay. Well, I guess that makes sense. They are pacifist. But. They also are a target of cast uh, act of war from us from animosity. Oh, they're still openly hostile to us. Okay, that explains a little bit. But they like us a little bit. Hmm. Weird. Okay. Um, if I had another... Envoy that was open. But I have Ira busy with Earth right now. And Prothamesh dealing with... Uh, the galactic community. But actually, I'm doing pretty well with Earth right now. I probably don't need to continue having the uh, envoy there. Especially because I have everything with humans except a migration treaty. Hmm. Let's bring the humans some furries, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Modify with what? Uh, I have no idea. I think that would be favors if I had them, but I don't have any favors with them. So I guess that works. Our Senate will review this proposal. Okay. Oh, I just noticed also I had that apparently completed. Opening migration between us will make for a better future for felons and humans alike. Hey! Nice! Hell yeah. So, we have also completed Ceramo Metal Alloys, which will up our alloys yield. The widespread use of advanced ceramics in industry can improve metallurgical yields. Hells yeah. Let's do it. Alright, um, everything else. Jeez, that's a lot. Oh boy, that's a lot. Okay, um... I really want cruisers. But standardizing the destroyer patterns would be nice too. Mm. Don't know. Honestly, don't know. Yeah. I don't need antimatter or minif... Um, antimatter missiles or mineral purification that badly. At least not yet. So I guess we'll go for standardized destroyer patterns. Just because I want that too. Establishing new standards for the modeling and construction of destroyers greatly improves the efficiency of the production pipeline. Booyah. Let's do it. Alright, um... 
scientist wise, I have a maniacal waiting for me. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Okay. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. I meant to go to Dawn Light. Check on their leader. I can't assign a leader. Oh! I don't have them assigned to a sector. I had to make a new sector. That's why. That explains it. Okay. Well, there we go. <laughs> Alright. Well. That does that. Mm -hmm. What's the population doing? Work-wise. And then we have that odd factory. And we have a worker in there that's making a decent number of alloys for us. Wowzers. Okay. Uh, which says to me, next thing I really need to work, work, shaga fraga, uh, work on is bringing in more uh, consumer uh, factories, consumer goods factories. That's what the word was that I was trying to say, but my brain then collapsed in on itself. Okay, anyway. Um, Inbound oh, message good. traffic. Hmm. The Senate floor is in session. The galactic community is now voting on a new resolution to decide if it will become galactic law. Nice. And now we have a migration treaty from the Yeon Alliance. The Felinian people should not be prisoners in the Empire of Felinae, and neither should our own people be limited to inhabit our territory. Let us agree to remedy this. I mean, I don't see why not. Y'all have been good allies to us thus far. Sure. Yeah, I can live with that. Let's check right now. See, that symbol is calling in a favor. That's what it was. That's what I thought. Okay, now that I know that. Um, this is the buzzword standardization that was proposed by the Yeon Alliance. And... I have no reason to not vote for this. I like this. Adds the diplomatic weight from the economy up. And really, it just ups the bureaucrat upkeep, which isn't really that much of an issue. I have no problems. I'm okay with that. I'll stay in my supporting stance for now. I have no reason not to. Okay. So far, so good. Empress Antonia leveled up. Nice. Scientist Javier Solano. Oh, he just leveled up. He didn't gain any Construction special complete. things. Ooh, yay! Done with the uh, construction over at Achenar. Okay. Where should I put you then? Hmm. Huh. I guess I'll put you over here to work on that. Hifnar warriors sighted. For several months now, we have received scattered reports of small numbers of alien mercenaries and privateers operating on the frontiers of our space. They call themselves the Hifnar, and are apparently exiles from a nomadic warrior culture inhabiting overcrowded space stations in and around the Izax system. Their passage near our space proceeded without incident, but they warned us against trespassing in Izax. There is no Hifnar central government to speak of, but their various factions are engaged in constant infighting and often launch raids against neighboring star systems. Indeed, given their vast population and space-based production capability, the Hifnar would likely be a significant galactic power if they ever stopped killing each other. Let's attempt to contact them. Why not? No fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> They're fucking furries too. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's great. Outsiders, we are the Hifnar. Unlike the civilized star nations of the galaxy, we have no single master to lord over us. 
but I have been chosen to convey this message to you on behalf of all the houses. Do not try to impose your soft and effet ways upon us. You may freely send your alien ships into Hifnar territory, but do not expect them to return. Our warriors will welcome the diversion, however. Transmit on this frequency only if you wish to offer tribute, or if you have need of mercenaries, as well as the means to pay for them. Okay. Interesting. System reconnaissance completed. Interesting, 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 interesting. All right. Hifnar Free Warriors. And where were they again? Oh! They're over there by the Commonwealth of Man. Interesting. And they inhabit... Hmm. Just like a straight line. <laughs> kind of blocks off the uh, Empire, from, Empire of Man from going towards... Uh, what is this? Sacrosanct Thamoid, Thamoid Conclave. It's a hell of a name, I'll tell you what. Alright, um... I just noticed that a lot of things are... Oh. Oh? Oh. Oh, oh. Oh, 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 oh. oh. I didn't realize I would need to do that. Interesting. Do the research projects here, 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 and here. And actually we'll move Dean Glass and the Velasco over to Felendale. Because why not? All right. Science division reports a new breakthrough. Ooh. Zero G laboratories researched. Nice. All right. Hey, finally, I noticed the numbers were actually straight zeros, and I just noticed our administrative capacity is back to semi-normal. Nice. Okay. Now, what do I actually go for now? Yeah. Normally, I would be going for more research. But the last thing I need to be doing right now is creating more ways for my consumer goods to go down. But... We'll save it for next time. We'll save it for next time. I kind of like the idea of the global energy management, though. With the energy grid and the capacity overload edict. That, that's actually very nice. That would help me with my current uh, drop in energy credits issue <laughs> currently. Okay. Uh, load balancing facilities can greatly improve the f uh, stability of local grids and feed excess power back into centralized capacitors. And this edict allows short-term overloading of energy grids, letting power plants across our empire run at increased capacity. Awesome. I like that. Do it! Alrighty. Construction complete. Ooh. Nice. Let's have you build the mining stations and then move on to... There. Right after. Uh, to Banago. Banajo. I don't know how I should pronounce that. I'm going to go with Banajo, because it's fun to say. <laughs> Whoopsie doodle. I meant to look at Chetris. Specifically, 3A. Oh, that's tiny. System Chetris reconnaissance two, completed. That. System it's reconnaissance completed. Kind of, kind of tiny. But that's fine. That's fine. Funtral. It's rather small. Kind of small when it comes to that. Abandoned observation post. System huh. reconnaissance completed. The star platform increases the star sol star's solar wind outflow by bombarding areas of its 
atmosphere with microwaves. The solar wind's energy can then be harvested by a mine. But why? Why would it do that? Oh! Construction complete. The strike force is repaired. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Let's reinforce it to full. For really no other reason other than I can. Mm hmm. What is this? Oh, this is a space amoeba. Ow! Oh, come on. There we go. That's what I wanted. Alright. Um. Construction ship is done there. Nice. Oopsie doodle. Wanted you to build that. And then you can go over here and do that. All right, nice. And what are you doing? Nothing. Okay, well, let's fix that. Since this is a big honking thing, that is not a good thing to be next to, we just won't bother going there and go here instead. And then we'll just go around here and see what's in this direction. I think I like the sound of that. And then we'll look at what's here. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. Anything on the planets I should be worried about? Nope. Okay. System reconnaissance completed. Beautiful. Ha. Huh. Interesting. Kettlings. Yes. We know of them. Our once brethren. Generations ago. Long back. They did not like, did not approve that we were cleverer than they. Better at collecting, finding, taking. Greater. They sent us away. Floating in the void. No matter. We are stronger now without them. What can you offer us then? Oh! Another ship. We have a ship. A destroyer. Very good. Fast, strong, well equipped. Certainly not getting rid of it for a reason. Oh no! No time to let your mechanics examine. You want the ship, do you not? Give us 200 minerals and the ship is yours. Okay, let's do it. A pleasure, a joy to deal with the Empire of Felony. You will visit again. Super Clanker! Alright. Can I merge this with a fleet? I can. Interesting. Also, I have eight ships that need upgrading. Since when? Okay, that's weird. Um, but I don't want to do that with them just yet. Um... them together? No. No, I cannot. What about them? No. Okay. I guess I just merge the super clanker with uh, the main fleet. Or or I make this the its own separate fleet. I could do that. I don't see why not. Yeah, just make the home base uh Rhea, and just send it there. The what? Ah, uh, okay. This is the reinforcements for uh, the first Imperial Strike uh, fleet. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Because now I know. What do I? The Yon Alliance has entered a migration treaty with the Polysimus Syndicate. Okay. That's what you want. Anomaly found. Our science officer has found an anomaly. It will require extensive probing, but could garner a substantial find. That's a lot of uh, time to research it, though. Okay. Look into it. And the Eon Alliance has entered a migration treaty with the United Nations of Earth. Humans are getting even more furries. <laughs> They're getting featheries now, I guess, technically. But still... 
<laughs> oh, the furries on Earth are probably rejoicing. They're loving this. System reconnaissance completed. Alrighty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Construction complete. Nice. All right. I'm going to have you build it all that there. And then I guess I'll send you back because I don't have enough yet to continue moving you that way. Uh, trap. Hmm. Strength from small places. Having probed the frozen landscapes of the planet Elthior 1, we think we have struck something big. Science officer Shivangi Sondharam, that's a name that my tongue doesn't like to pronounce, mainly because it's really difficult for my fat fucking tongue. Anyway, uh, speaks of a bacterial life form unlike any other. It bonds with other individuals to form large blankets that are durable yet light, and also acts as solar cells. They absorb solar energy with a surprisingly low efficiency loss percentage. Most likely a result of evolution favoring those who could gather more heat in the harsh climate. Our researchers back home could surely find some use for this information. Let's see if it can be improving our energy production which would be nice our energy development researchers have made progress with the samples we sent them from Elthior 1 they have been able to develop a new type of solar cell using the organisms as a template these are much more efficient at storing energy and will provide a boost to all of our power plants hell yeah fucking awesome man marvelous all right. All right. And then once that construction is done, system on reconnaissance travel, completed. We will system be able reconnaissance to... completed. Elthior 3. Despite the planet's lack of atmosphere, there is evidence of some kind of artificial structures on Elthior 3 that may indicate a past civilization. Absolutely look into that. But also. My original thought. Uh, once the construction ship is done on Trab, we will move to Eum and then have this whole area that is ours to look into. We have space amoeba hostiles right there. That's something we'll need to deal with, but not necessarily right now. All right, build that. That'll work. And then go back, I guess. <laughs> That's about all you can do. I have no influence Special to do project anything right complete. now. Oh. The origin of the Ketlings. The exile's investigation into the rat-like sapiens on Fallen Outpost have produced some surprising results. The Ketlings are scions capable of sharing their thoughts via a telepathic network spanning millions of small minds. Though they avoid interacting with us, and we lack evidence to suggest they are capable of advanced spaceflight, it would be remiss to classify the Ketlings as mere primitives. In fact, some of their repurposed machinery possesses a technical sophistication approaching even our own. Moreover, the Ketlings are neither the descendants of the civilization that constructed these cities, nor the conquerors that destroyed them. Rather, the Ketlings were once the pets of the spacefarers who first colonized these systems. That other group said that the Ketlings were basically them. Does that mean they were... That's... Okay. Alright. Fair enough. After their master's downfall... The Proto-Ketlings were one of the few species to survive centuries of nuclear fallout on these ruined planets. Constant exposure to radioactive elements led to faster mutations in the Ketlings' genetic code, and their nimble appendages, relatively startling in relative starting intelligence, and close proximity to a variety of decrepit tools all culminated in the rapid emergence of a technologically advanced culture. 
Huh. So the Ketlings were actually considered the pets of the spacefarers who colonized them. So... Is this basically saying, like, cats will eventually rule the Earth once we fuck up the Earth? Is that what this is saying? <laughs> cats or dogs? Or all of them? Is this what it's saying? I think that's what it's saying. I think that's what it's saying, honestly. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Alright, um... That's surveyed. That's surveyed. That's the anomaly they're searching. And... Ah! I see. Science Division reports a new breakthrough. Construction my complete. Fleet's not doing anything. Why is my... I could have sworn I set them back to aggressive. I guess I didn't do that. Okay. That's my bad, I guess. I'll work on that. Fleet action underway. Huh. Frozen in time. The crew of the ISS Kuti were intrigued to find the remains or rather remnants of an industrial age civilization on Elthior 3. Investigation indicates that Elthior 3 had sustained an atmosphere for millions of years until massive super flares from the unstable surface of the star Elthior led to runaway ionization and depletion of the planet's atmospheric gases. With no atmosphere, the lifeless cities on Elthior 3 have been frozen in time for millennia silent monuments to the mass extinction that happened there. Science officer Shivangi Sandharam cautions that any colonies in the Elthior system may be subject to the whims of the star's turbulence. Well, that is unfortunate. And it does make sense. It's very unfortunate, though. Okay, so that got finished. Nice. So we move on to... Considering I have none of that coming in, I might want to look into that. Hmm. Huh. But then again, speculative hyperlane breaching is pretty cheap right now, and it's a rare technology. Huh. Yeah, let's go with this. Because it would be nice to have that feature. Solitary science ships can break out of the naturally occurring hyperlanes and attempt to navigate to known but otherwise unreachable destinations. Hell yeah, let's do it. Good for me. And what are you doing? Oh, you're moving to go back there. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Eon Alliance has declared Sutherian Entity their rival. Makes sense. The United Nations of Earth has entered a research agreement with the Eon Alliance. There we go. And, quite frankly, since they're allied with most of our allies now, we don't need to have a envoy there at all times. What we could do... is try to improve... Wait, why is our relations going bad again with Polissima Syndicate? Let's just end the rivalry. We don't we don't need to have a rivalry with them. We do with the Sutherian entity, absolutely. But this might go a long way into improving relations with them. And Hmm. Hmm. Maybe in the meantime, we'll send uh, Ira over here just to undo some of the damage. Maybe talk them into maybe realizing we're not a threat to them. Maybe. Might be worth it. Might be. Nice. All right. I don't... 
No, well, that one's not joining. Okay, I'm pretty sure that one should be with uh, first strike force, so we'll do that. Okay. Our starbase in the Straya system reports that the Racket Industrial Fleet fleet. <laughs> That's just unfortunate words to be combined together like that. Uh, has evacuated and abandoned a decrepit ship. Now in unstable orbit around the sun's central star. Around the system's central star. One man's trash. And we'll send them back to get upgraded. That should work. The what? Oh! Why is... <laughs> Why is the sign ship just having no fucks? Oh, because it's set to passive. It should be a little bit more caring about its Taking life. Taking evasive action. <laughs> Just a little bit. Special right. project complete. Hmm. Huh. The box is indeed a document of a sort. Made a whiff of something. Oh, yeah, this thing. I forgot to have someone look into that. Science officer the Exile admits that they had been hoping for a historical record or some other kind of codex significant to whatever culture left it behind, but they were disappointed. The true nature of the aromatic box seems to be a collection of fairly short narratives, which, going by the rapid changes in odor towards the end of each sequence, are intended to surprise or be interpreted as comedic. The techniques used to store and reproduce uh, specific smells is of some interest, but the tales it tells are not. The crew of the ISS Policier are left with the uncomfortable feeling that they have unwittingly become intimately familiar with what certain gaseous byproducts of alien digestion smell like. <laughs> so basically they're worried that they were just sitting there smelling farts all damn day. <laughs> That's what they're saying. Okay. Understandable. However, the exile is unwilling to speculate as to why the box was dumped on this frozen hellscape of a planet. Interesting. Interesting. And the exile is only doing that. Um, what else was there? Uh, this. What was the thing they needed to do there? I forget. Oh, that was the Deep Sea Expedition. Hmm. Okay. And the construction ship in orbit of... Where? Uh... I didn't want it looking at me. I wanted it looking at where the... Oh! I see. I see! Said the blind man to his deaf son as he pissed into the wind. It's all coming back to me. Okay, they're doing that there. They're doing that there. Actually, after he's done with that, make him finish that and then do that. That sounds good to me. Space Amoeba. Oh, he's still not out of it yet. Construction That's why. complete. That explains that. It is not a relic. It is an antique. Just think. It survived this many centuries already. Built to last. Okay. What can you offer us? Or. Huh. Oh, minerals. That's what it is. Not necessarily what I need, but, I mean, they do need food. And I do have plenty of food. We have ore, rich, luminous ore, torn right from the stone. Sparkling minerals for the Empire felony. 
but we hunger. We thirst. Grant us 1,000 of food, and we shall supply your builders, your makers, with 500 minerals. Okay. A pleasure, a joy to deal with the Empire of Felony. We will visit again. That voice is just too fun. <laughs> is it the same as I did last episode? Probably not, but... <laughs> All right, you are done there. You are getting that taken care of. Nice. Where are you? You're doing that. That's right. I remember now. You've done that for me, and for that, you shall be rewarded with a little rest. And the science ship Brinkman needs to look at Ukalam. Ukalam. Who Callum? I think it's Ukalan. Who cares? It's my fucking game. <laughs> anyway. Hmm. Interesting. The tundra world. It's small though. Yeah. Oh well, we'll look into it though. Just Science in ship case. reports enemy contact. Wait, what? What? Why did Oh, boy. Why did he go that way? He had no reason to. So. I've saved Scum a little bit just because. Just because. There's no reason the pathing should have went that way. At all. Yeah, why are you going that way? No, no, absolutely not. The, the game is clearly being silly. Yeah, see, it's, it shouldn't be pathing it that way because it knows there's a threat there. So, I did the save scumming. It, only for the reason that there is, it should not have done that. It should not have. That is the only reason I have done this little bit of save scumming. And I'll admit it's a little bit of save scumming, but at the same time, that should not have happened at all. So. <sighs> with that, going to do that like I should have going to allow that to happen and move them to mining and that should be good and now it makes me look like an asshole what I'm doing but at the same Anomaly time found. That was a bug on the game's end. There is no reason the science ship should have thought, Oh yeah, that's the path through a Leviathan-controlled system. Which the entire galaxy knows that it's a Leviathan-controlled system. There is no reason, none, that that should have happened. That's clearly a bug. That's why we do the save scum backtrack. It's fine. It's fine. Y'all will give me that. I hope. <laughs> I hope. <sighs> anyway. With that said and done. Science Division reports a new breakthrough. Okay. Nice. That's done. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. The thing I want. Rare crystal mining. The thing I need, because I will have a lot of things dealing with crystals. <sighs> yeah, we'll be doing this. We'll be doing this for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mining these crystals without damaging or even destroying them is an extremely delicate process. It requires advanced equipment capable of pinpoint precision. 
These crystals have properties that make them extremely effective at focusing laser beams, and they are also a critical component in most advanced electronics. In addition, many cultures treasure them as decorations and adornments. Because they're pretty. Why not? They're pretty. Crystals are pretty. Let's be honest. Let's be honest with ourselves. Crystals are pretty. Anywho. That said. That done. All that bullshit. <laughs> taken care of. I'm going to end the episode here for right now. We are now... We have blocked off the Yen Alliance from this direction. That's fine because they can continue going this way. Unless there's also things in this direction that have made it impossible for them to go to. Which I guess is possible. Uh, I will deal with this uh, group of space amoebas soon. And then we'll see what's actually going on here and why they haven't expanded to these things yet. Because why they haven't, I still have no idea. But we have a leviathan here and a leviathan here. And I think a leviathan here. Yes, we do. That is the Tianki Matriarch. So we have a lot of leviathans just sitting around the general area of where we're exploring in a lot of places. So, um, yeah. Actually, now I think about it. Make them do... See? See what I was talking about? See? Should not be doing it in that sort of pathing. But it seems to want to anyway. There. Alright. I'll have them pick up the research thing here. They'll arrive there in 850 days. It'll last for 1600 days, so that's fine. And then it will do all of that, and yeah, that's all good. Okay. Now I end the episode. <laughs> anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Click the subscribe button if you like these videos and you want to see more. Click the like button if you like this particular video. And share and comment so I can bring more people into this community. We can talk about the games we're playing together, and I will see you all in the next episode. This has been the one and only, <laughs> one and only Stray Cat. Playing games, having my voice crack in the middle of my outro like I'm some fucking teenager. And, uh... Yeah, just look at our galaxy. Look at how it's uh, amassing. And look at how much of a portion of it we're going to take up. This whole section here. And uh, if people get on our way, we'll take them out too. More likely than not, we'll have to deal with the Polysimus Syndicate. I don't think they're going to be friends with us. Uh, at all. Oh, maybe. Eh, maybe. We'll see if we can get them off of the rivalry thing. Uh... But other than that, if we can't, well, they get annihilated. Just how it be, unfortunately, for you.